Glória a Deus. Aleluia, Senhor. Glória a Deus. Aleluia. Nós nos damos a todos hoje, na noite, com a paz do Senhor. I invite whoever can to stand up in reverence to the reading of the Word of God. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Verse 7. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. I'm going to read 7a until the part a of verse 8. Thus says the word of God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in G Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing mil with milk and honey. Amen. Only to this, the brethren may be seated. May the Lord bless us through his word. My brethren, before we begin, I'm going to share with you a spiritual gift that the Lord has given to us. Interesting, the Lord was showing that there was a uh, waterfall, the water was falling, and there were fish that Havia wanted to subir subir por ela porque ela dava acesso ali a um jardim muito bonito, a um local ali especial. E aqueles peixes eles não conseguiam atravessar. For, to cross the fall in a natural way. But the Lord was showing that in a certain moment there those fish they would turn into people and that water was turned into blood and when the water was turned into blood those fish they were able to climb up the fall and they would now become part of that garden that were that were that was beyond that water fall and at that moment the the vision was showing that it was a clock that was showing six o'clock and when they crossed that waterfall uh, waterfall the clock was now showing one minute before midnight, and at that moment, that water, that blood, would turn again into water. And my brethren, we glorify the Lord because this spiritual gift is prophetic. There is upon the church a responsibility to carry a word to men. And you who are here tonight, hearing this word, the ones who are outside, there is a church, there is a people that is carrying a message. And this message is salvation through the power of the blood of Jesus. And men in their condition, when they are able to reach this understanding of the death and uh, of the resurrection of Jesus, they begin to become, integrate this garden. They begin to be a part of this church that is living this prophetic moment, which is the moment that precedes the midnight in which the world is being afflicted. The church is being going through a trial, but it's a people that is waiting for the return of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the, the name of the Lord. And the text that we just read, the book of Exodus, it, it illustrates part of the story of Israel. And the book of Exodus begins to tell the story of Israel from the moment in which the people was being afflicted in Egypt. Let's summarize the story of Israel. Joseph comes down to Egypt. He was sold, he was betrayed, and he goes down to Egypt. He becomes a governor of Egypt. His family also comes down to Egypt because there was a great famine upon the earth, upon the land. And now Israel begins to live in Egypt even though that was not a, the promised land, even though we can state 
they did not want to stay in Egypt, even if they had not asked to be in Egypt, that was the situation that they were going through. The people of Israel goes down to Egypt and begin to live in Egypt. And in the beginning, everything was all right. There was no problem. Joseph was a governor of Egypt. Firstly, in the first place was Pharaoh, and Joseph was second place. So in other words, he had authority and power. He protected his people. But that Pharaoh that Joseph was a friend with has died, and now Joseph also dies. And now it begins the period there, a period of affliction upon the people of Israel. And there is a moment in which everything is all right. Also in our lives, right? Isn't it true? There is a, the moment everything is all right, everything is flowing. But there are also moments in which things are not going very well. Isn't it true? But at that, at that moment, there was in that period, this period was a period in which Israel was going through an affliction in Egypt. And now Pharaoh wanted to persecute them, that increased the load upon them and their taxes, increased the persecution against them. It was a people that was rejected in Egypt. It was a people that was despised in, in Egypt. It was a people that was growing in might because it was a people that was blessed by God. They were growing and multiplying. And that was exactly the fear of Pharaoh, that these people end up dominating and rebel. And that people might, in a moment of war, may, may ally to the, their enemies and fight against Pharaoh. And then he begins to persecute the people of Israel and deprive the people of Israel of their traditions and their religions, of their freedom their right to serve the Lord and they begin to afflict the people to the point where he even asked to kill the ones who were born there they were Jewish they, they gave an order to uh, the women that helped in the, the birth to kill uh, uh, the Jewish people so that these people not grow in number Abraham, when we hear the word of God, the word of God is prophetic, and the Old Testament is for us, and the New Testament is a mirror of, mirror of, of what happened in the Old Testament, and today also if we bring to what Israel, Israel lived, we are the spiritual Israel, and we are also a church in which we are in the world, in a world where we are going through afflictions. The moment in which the church is leaving is a prophetic moment. A moment where Jesus, when he spoke with the disciples, he said, Look, do not be afraid. It is, it is necessary that all of these things happen, but it's still not the end. My brethren, the church is being afflicted. The church is being confronted by the king of this world, which is the enemy because of their traditions, the way that they impose their own society and the way they live and the, the depriving people from serving the Lord. In this place, we still have freedom, but there are the place where there's no freedom. There's a church that's been going through a trial and is being persecuted in the same way as Israel went through at that moment. But there's also a people that is pleading to the Lord. When Israel was in affliction, what did Israel do? The word says that Israel remember the Lord. My brethren, one, the ones who are in affliction, if you entered here tonight, if you are in affliction, we don't know what is your affliction. We don't know exactly how the enemy is confronting you, is afflicting you. But we want to state one thing. If you do according to what Israel did, if you plead to the Lord, He will hear you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the word says, the text begins by saying that the Lord, the Lord heard the cry of Israel. My brethren, because the Lord hears the cry of the afflicted. The Lord hears the cry of the one who are in need. 
That's why the Lord Jesus, when he turned to his disciples, he said, "Come upon me, all the ones who are oppressed and afflicted, because I will give you relief." And our help is in the Lord. Our hope is in the Lord. And he said, "Take upon you my your your yoke, and you find in me rest for your souls." And my brethren, Israel had no other place to resort. They had only one hope, which was to resort to the Lord, is to plead to the King of Israel. Because even if Israel were in Egypt, they knew of one thing: we do not belong to Egypt. We belong to the King of Israel. We belong to the God of Abraham, to the God of Isaac and Jacob. We belong to the to the God that elected nation. And they began to cry to this God. And my brethren, we also cry out to the to our Lord, the God that called us to this to His kingdom, the Lord that gave us an experience with Him, the Lord that spoke to us through a spiritual gift, a revelation, or a dream, is a God that spoke to us through His Word. Is the God that has visited us, visited us, in a moment of affliction, in the moment of of our greatest affliction and pain, the Lord has revealed Himself to our hearts, and to this God that has revealed Himself to us, this is the God to whom we plead every day. Affliction is ahead of us; it's right before us every day, and our plea and our cry and our victory. They are also before us every day, because the word says that the Lord heard the cry of His people. Because I knew your pain, the Lord knows the individuality of our hearts. The Lord Jesus, in His ministry, when He revealed Himself to men. He revealed himself in an individual way. When he spoke to his accusers, he said, "Let you come down from a tree, because today is it's pleasing to me to rest in your house." He knew that his accusers was there. When he spoke to the Samaritan woman, he spoke about the secret of her heart, and she, the woman was amazed because Jesus knows the secret of her heart. He knows your life, and he reveals himself in the individuality of our of our need. And you who are here tonight, you can plead to the Lord because the Word says that the Lord came down. He came down to deliver us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He came down. Jesus. He came down from the glory of the Father. He was the only begotten Son of God. And the Word says that the the Word, the Word, He was. God, he was with God. He became flesh, so he became a man, and he inhabited amongst us. And when Jesus does this, my brethren, he did this to deliver men from sin. He did, he did this to deliver your life from sin. He did this for love to our lives, a love that cannot be explained, and according to human understanding. But it is a love that transcends our understanding. It is a love that comes from God. It's a love that went to the point of sent that God sent only the only Son to die on the cross of Calvary to rescue a people that was not deserving. But for love, we have been rescued from sin. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it's through the death of uh, of Jesus on the cross of Calvary that the victory was decreed. Death was defeated and the victory, because when Jesus goes to Calvary, the death did not keep did not keep him, because he was resurrected the third day, and now he is on the right hand side of the Father, to uh, give us hope with the promise. Jesus will return to um, take this church. I will take. I will bring them up. I will bring them up. My people will. Be, we come up from the land of Egypt. Now I ask a question: Was there was there other uh, alternative other than to leave Egypt, to wait until Pharaoh became uh, a good guy, 
or exchange pharaoh or maybe the next pharaoh took power or maybe someone from the army resort to home resort to Moses or Aaron my brethren for the faithful church there is no hope in this world we are not being deceived by the world the church has this knowledge we, we are not waiting for the things to get better from this moment forward because the word says that the world is a weighty sunk in evil things are going from bad to worse we are not waiting for this world to get better other things are going to get better or whether the church is going to be less persecuted or whether the church is going to go through a period of relief or the things are going to get better no Israel had no hope in Egypt Israel knew of one thing we need to leave Egypt there's a church at this last hour that has this message. There's a church that is proclaiming to the world that Jesus will return. There's a church that knows that things are not going, are not going to get better. The things are, are only going to get better when the church is raptured from this world. The word rapture means to be taken up by force. So the Holy Spirit is going to take this church from this world. The Holy Spirit is going to take us from this world so that we can inherit a, inherit a land that was promised to Abraham. Abraham. When Abraham was called, the Lord said to Abraham, Abraham, leave your land and your, from amongst your relatives. I'm going to lead you to a land. I'm going to show you a land that fl where it flows honey and milk. We also left our own traditions, we left our sin and let go of our human reason because there is a, a promise upon us. Jesus will return. Our hope is that he will sustain us to the end. From the moment in which the Lord spoke to Israel, that the Lord came down to deliver them, to the moment in which Israel left Egypt, went through the desert and entered into the promised land. There was a, a great journey there. Our journey will be long. And it is what God said to the, to the prophet Elijah. Come up, Elijah, eat and drink because your journey is going to be long. And, but blessed be the name of the Lord because in this long journey, the Lord will be with us at every moment. The Lord will be with us. Get up, drink and eat because the, the journey is long, but I will be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm going to take you to a land where it flows honey and milk. What land is this? What land is this? It was a, a place that was unknown to them. A place where they did not know any place where any land that where if uh, flowing honey and milk. It is a supernatural land, and the eternity that expects us is something that we can't have no ability to imagine with uh, with the human eyes or human understanding. But we, by faith, we believe that the Lord will take us to this land. It is our hope when the Lord says that He will dry up from our eyes every tear blessed be the name of the Lord this is the hope of the church a relief will be in eternity and our, pre our always present help is the presence of Jesus with us let us be sure be, be sure of one thing in no moment that you plead the Lord will stop listening to you at every moment that you plead to him at every moment that you see yourself in affliction you plead to him and remember one thing that is upon me a promise I will go to eternity blessed be the name of the Lord now we're going to sing a song Hallelujah Senhor
Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. I invite the church to stand up at this moment. This church will be glorifying the Lord, praising the name of the Lord. We're going to hear also a woman. We will glorify the name of the Lord. Lord, we praise your name. We praise the Lord because our hope is in the Lord. We praise because from the day that you received your presence, has promised our eternal life. That's why we praise the Lord. Because with you, we'll overcome everything, Lord. With you, we we'll come in the eternal land. We praise you for this great day. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah, God. The church glorifying the Lord. Okay. I tell you, my servants, that tonight I was able to visit your heart. And I tell you, my servant, I can, thinking even to leave my presence, and I tell you, my daughter. Porque eu sou a tua resposta. Eu te faço lembrar de quando eu te elegi para esta obra. Eu te digo que eu sou o mesmo Deus. Eu não mudei. Clamai a mim, porque eu hei de sustentá-la até o fim. Until the end, and you, my beloved servants, can glorify the name of our God, because what pulsates in your heart is the desire to be in my eternity. And my spirit is tonight has testified this in your heart. Wait, wait a little longer, and my son will take you. He's going to bring you into my eternity. And I, uh, I promise you eternal rest because I'm your God. And for this, I have called you to this kingdom. That's why I ask you rest, rest on your Lord. Because I will be with you until then. Hallelujah. Let's be your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord God, we want to glorify. We want to praise your name for your presence, the glorious presence in this place. Because we know, Lord, that you are our hope. I know that you are our refuge. You are, uh, know that you are the one whom we can trust. That's why we need to, maybe uh, to you, maybe our praise and our gratitude because your promise never change. That's why we trust in you, Lord. And we offer to you our service and our praise and our adoration. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. The youth meeting after the end of the meeting. If any other brethren and you who visit us still desire to receive a prayer, we're here at your disposal. Now the the problematic part, <laughs> the brethren who did uh, registration for the seminar in Florida on 7 or 8 of January, first week, the ones who have not regularized that situation, we have until tomorrow doubt on a need uh, ask for brother David he's going to guide you. our video is going to be in the church of Hollandale which everybody knows about and after the video there is going to be a moment of of, of fellowship and the brethren who want to participate on this dinner I speak with your group of assistants or in your name to David so that he can hand your name to the people of Hollandale so that they can make a prediction in the restaurant. We also have until tomorrow for this, we have to inform ahead of time so that on the day nothing goes beyond what is already determined. We have uh, also the amount that was 
the, the amount that was given by the group of assistants from uh, regarding Holland that we don't need to pay right now and to all the peace of the Lord if anyone desire a prayer for your life a clarification of the word we are here to help give assistance